Hello and welcome back again, Bots and Bits fans. Today we are taking a very good look at the Black Mamba LS01 Ares Nitrogen. This is, of course, their KO! oversized version of Hasbro's Nitro from the movie The Last Night. Huge thanks to Black Mumba for reaching out to me on Weibo and asking me to take a good look at this guy. I've had a few things organized with companies in the past that some nefarious asshole, a, a nefarisol, has just sort of swept in and ruined at the last second. I'll get into more about that guy at a later date, but for the moment, thank you very much Black Mumba for supplying this to me and thank you very much to ShowZ Store for helping facilitate this all happening. Head over to their website, they've got, I'm pretty sure they've got plenty in stock, they've got a great price. Um, all the links are in the description below and yeah, find one for yourself. Now you know me, I'm not a fan of the Michael Bay films and so I'm not usually a fan of the toys either. They all just sort of look like cutlery, all just sort of mashed together. Welcome back Bots and Bits fans. Today I'm taking you through the Bayverse Masterpiece Scorponok. Alright, enough of that and more of this. Let's just check out the box. Pictures, pictures, more pictures and that's it, it's gone. <laughs> now, let's go down and check out the few accessories that we get. So first up, we get his uh, movie head, which I think looks pretty good. Silver on the face is painted really, really nicely. No chips, no hairs or dirt. The sort of the optics there, it's not red plastic, it's just painted red. Uh, it's painted really nicely, just like the rest of the face, but you can see that they haven't gone all the way around. Bit of silver on the top there, which is done really nicely. I'm not a fan of this sort of bluish gray plastic color. That It's very basic and they've gone throughout the whole figure with it. Um, it's all held together pretty well, it's all tidied up nice. The only problem I have is um, the neck is really loose. And it doesn't look like there's any separation here or anything, it's just uh, a bit loose. Uh, and also, for some reason I've got two hoses. They're exactly the same, but yeah, whatever. Uh, we'll get into this in a sec. And also got some crumpled instructions. That's that. Now let's just come back up and check out this hose. Now it doesn't say anywhere in the instructions where the hose actually goes, and the picture when it's showing the hose is it's it's not very clear. You can't really see where it plugs into or anything. It's the same um same on the box. Like the hoses are all really dark. You can barely see it. But where it actually goes is this section here. It's shaped like the letter D. It's flat, and then back here. You've got this hole here, which is also shaped like the letter D. So it just plugs in there, like that. And then this little hook, it looks like it goes in this way because then the tube part has enough clearance on the elbow. So like you just sort of jam it in just like that. And it holds all right. Once you manipulate it a bit, um, it can wiggle out, but it, it's holding all right. The only problem is um, you've got to bend it like that to close this, it's it's not ideal. See, um, it's not, look at that, it's not ideal. But it's in there, it's not hindered at all. So, yeah, there you go, that's how it's done. Just another note, some promotional shots I've seen have shown another hose on this arm. I can't do that on mine. Um, it doesn't want to open, I don't know if you can see it, there's a metal pin filling that. Maybe I can just pop it out. Nah, nah look, I, I don't care enough to do that. But, um, yeah. Well, we've got him up close. Let's just come up a little bit. Uh, I'll just pop that head out and we'll put the toy head on. When you put it in, you've got to force it all the way forward. Because otherwise, if it's too far back, like, you get the neck itself, like, the, the peg rocks back and forth. The movie head that I got, um, full articulation and all that, but it's just... It's very loose. It's very loose on the ball socket. I, it's a shame because I prefer this head over the other head. Um, the toy face that you get. It does look good. Um, the red sort of eye section is done really well. The silver paint is all, it's very shiny, but it also looks a little bit dirty as well. It's not out of place, it's not messed up, nothing. They've done a good job. Silver paint on the top, that same basic bluey gray sort of color scheme all over. The ball socket on this one is nice and tight that's that's very good so i'm going to go back to the toy head for the rest of the review we'll just put because that one's loose and i'm not happy with it so let's just chuck this one back in and see see i've got that rocking i don't know if you can see in there or not there's like a crevice so you've got a flat section here that's about half a millimeter and then you've got this other section just here in between these two arms then there's a crevice 
it adds a bit of space under this peg which makes it rock see I can't imagine that they would actually want that to be a feature but yeah anyway and before we get into the rest of him I don't have much to compare him with but I can measure it for you he is what have we got 23 24 centimeters to the head 26 centimeters to the engine 27 28 centimeters to the missiles so I hope that is helpful now let me just go right ahead and start saying this guy is beefy as all of the joints, all the plastic, everything feels just really, really solid. These feet are just die cast. It's just one huge chunk. It's a little bit hollow. It's got some plastic screw on the bottom, but all of this is just all die cast. So this guy is just solid as, look at that. Solid, love it. The ball joint on the main head is nice and stiff. Get a good up, a good down. Hang on, let me just straighten him up. Uh, maybe not a good down, but a reasonable a reasonable down. You can always just sort of shift that neck forward a little bit because of that little crevice inside the neck peg if you want to get a little bit further down. In the shoulders, we have a soft ratchet here coming all the way up. What's that? One, two, three, four. Yeah, barely four. And then the shoulder pads also move. Now, not so much on this side, but on this side, this whole sort of shield thing hits the shoulder pad you can just squeeze it these little bits go around it's part of the shoulder just squeeze it up just a little bit and you get the full clearance this side also has the soft ratchet which uh, has a little bit of play in it but uh, yeah look it's it's a little bit soft on that side compared to that side it could be the weight difference that this whole cockpit thing is, does seem quite heavy. We've got upper bicep swivels, which are both nice and tight. We've already covered the elbows, which work really well. It comes down to the fist. This hand has no articulation, but it, it does, I think the wrist does fold in for transformation. So you can get a little bit, a little bit out of that. Nothing really. Let's just say that the hands are immobile. Uh, what have we got? Meant to have these two things out actually. It's meant to be spring loaded or something. Oh no, there we go. Just difficult to get out, that's all. There, what is that, a crossbow? Crossbow sort of thing? I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. I, I looked up the character briefly and I thought, what a what an asshole this character is. But um, yeah, anyway. Down to the hips, let's just move these arms out of the way. Hips. Sounds like a ratchet, but moves like a friction joint. And the ratchet, it really doesn't do anything. Um, I think it's probably more the screw holding that leg out than anything else. But considering the weight of the foot, um, that's that that's pretty good. Uh, what else have we got? We've got an upper thigh swivel, which is nice and stiff, and we've got an excellent knee bend. And then we've just got this knee detail here, which can move over to cover some of that up. And then you've got the mechanics just come poking through there. So that's a really good look down to the foot, all the way back like that, and a reasonable amount forward to get a good, to get a good walking pose. And then we have a decent pivot as well. And it's all they're all consistently stiff. Same with that side. Look at that. It's all very, very stiff. This leg is a little bit looser. This side seems just a little bit looser than this side. But for playability and posing, I think it's not 10 out of 10, this arm and this leg, but it's passable. And then in the back, I'm pretty sure these are meant to, these are meant to articulate up. Okay, so let's just move that fin out of the way. And then it's just got a hinge just right there. And it's just a little bit of a tab, pop it up. Yeah, geez, that, that's tight. <laughs> that's very tight. It's a very, hang on, you've come on tab, tab, yeah, there we go, that's better. All right, now that, <laughs> that is epic. That looks awesome. Check that out, that is, a, that is a cool look. That is an awesome look right there. That's all the articulation covered. Now, what I want to go over next is just the colossal amount of paint, black mumba, have put. Let's just move them up like that. That's. Uh, I actually prefer that to them being tabbed in. Anyway, back on track. The insane amount of paint that black mumba have put into this. It's all done well, but I'm I'm not a big fan of the colours that they've chosen. All right. So this sort of basic grey blue that they've gone for the plastic. I don't think. Um, this reflective metal really complements it very well. Everything just sort of, yeah, I, I don't know. It's not a palette that I'm that I'm a big fan of. I wish there was a little bit more of a contrast. When I look at the Hasbro toy, 
I think all of the body parts and interior was just flat black with this and it was real it popped it was it was good this is just a little bit um, it just sort of all blends in together a little bit and then you've got this gold detail all popping up here and here and here and just all down here it's sort of gone a copper color in some places I'm not a fan of the gold or like I said it's done well I'm just I'm not a fan of the color scheme really I think it just needed a bit more contrast there could have been more black in the body parts or even just like a really really deep dark gun metal than what they went with but that's that's just me anyway so onto the paint as we can see like I said I mentioned that silver all the way over it it is just it is just done fantastic the details have not come out soft at all even though this is an oversize the details still look complex enough even when you're holding it up close just like that look at that and then when you put it away here it really looks intense all of these details it works well with the soft wide panels this is the sort of look that I like this reminds me a lot of um, of from software's armor core series uh, they they did a lot of designs sort of similar to this anyway so the silver base coat is done really well and then we've got the gold sections on top which are all really neat no chips no fuzziness no turt nothing got this little all of the cabling is sort of done a reflective blue the only thing I can fault the reflective blue on is because the cables are round um, a lot of the cables they have silver edging on them but you know that's that's it that's all I can really nitpick this red here done um, right between the gold let's just there we go that red just in there that looks fantastic that's a really good contrast I've got a bit of red up here which uh, I'm not a big fan of and we've got a little bit of spillage see these little silver bits that are meant to be cables a little bit of red coming over the top same on the other side bit of blue up here the machine guns on his shoulders they're all silver but they've got gold fronts well, I, I know they needed to contrast it a little bit but I think that's a little bit silly uh, up the back we've got this amazing amazing blue the way it captures the lights, sometimes it almost looks like it's got LEDs inside. A lot of the FOMO photos that I've seen online, I actually thought that it had a light up feature, but uh, it doesn't. Anyway, red tips on the missiles look a little bit lame. Down on the arm, this arm just all sort of blends into one, I think. This is all just the same color silver all the way through with this lightly painted. I think this is probably the worst gold on the whole bot. It's not, it's not done to the same standard as, as the rest of it, so it's sort of come out uh, a bit of a copper color uh, moving down the leg this is where a lot of the detail is and it's like um, oh, what's the it's maybe situational detail so the legs standing there are quite smooth quite sleek and designed um, it's not until you start moving him that all of the detail really comes into play like that and so on the legs we've got plenty of this blue cabling and here you can see there's the edging issue that I was talking about just the very side of the cabling it's sort of missing a bit of paint um, a lot of the cabling looks like that but it, the blue is done really well got some blue piping here some gold detail on the back here I'm, I think that that was an empty gap on the Hasbro on the back of the legs that they've sort of filled in with their own detail the black here has done nice contrast well with the silver and more of that cabling detail on the side here more on the back the foot, like I said, die cast. A lot of the time when they put a lot of paint onto die cast, it either looks um, speckly or it's lumpy and too thick. Uh, I think they've done uh, they've done a good job. The silver is a little bit powdery. It looks a little bit different to the rest of the silvers, but only when you're really examining it. The black is done really, really nice, and the gold is done just as nice as well. And we've got a bit of claw detail on the back. So overall, <clears throat> overall, the paint. The paint is done to a pretty a pretty good standard and there is a lot of paint as well. All right, so I think that's it for bot mode. Let's uh, go through his transformation and check out his jet mode. All right, so to start off with, I'm just gonna pull these uh, missiles off. It just makes things a little bit easier. Put them to the side and then I'm just gonna come around here and with this flap right there, it's gonna push on the lever and fold this in like that. And then I'm just gonna collapse this cannon. Then I'm just gonna come over to this um, collar area here grab the back of the machine guns and lever this up I'm gonna take the head off as well now this section here folds down like that just on this hinge later on we'll put the head back in All right, then I'm gonna start unfolding these wing sections now this turbine is tabbed in here so when you unfold it so I'm just gonna unfold this section tab that and then when you unfold this just support this turbine just like that because um, I, have, I have had them fly off 
and then fold that down, tab it in. Same on the other side. Just uh, fold that. This side, it just does not want to come um, out of that tab. Oh, oh, there we go. That was in there tight. Fold that back down again. Extend the wing and then just move them. Oh, and this section here. Unfold that both sides. Just move these wings now out of the way. Grab this whole tail section, fold it over. It's on a double hinge. Fold it down like that, and you can get your tails all sorted. Now I'm just going to bring these wings up out of the way like that, and my hoses come undone. Just got to pull that out. Now I'm going to fold these feet flat like so. Get these arms out of the way. Oh, I might as well just fold these sections in now, if you haven't already. Now I'm going to split the legs. I hate yanking on ratchets like this for this sort of transformation, but there's not much else you can do. I suppose I could probably just pry that apart. Oh, there we go. That was incredibly tight the first time I did it, but now um, it's a little bit easier. So let's just open them up. Now this side, this side here, it's on a hinge right there. So we're going to grab the leg and fold it up and out of the way. And then we're going to grab this shoulder, untab it, and bring it around like this. Just like that. <clears throat> now I had a big drama with this with a shoulder previously because remember that pin that I was talking about? Where is it? See that pin in there? It doesn't clear the plastic properly on the other side. So when I fold this around, straighten this arm up here, and then this shoulder section here, we're just going to flatten it like that and then wiggle all this down. Now see this pin is bumping into the plastic. It won't go through. Look at that. So the arm won't collapse all the way. I can't get the cockpit to tab in here. What I actually have to do is lift this plastic up and flex it like this to get the pin to, to go all the way through, just like that. And now, and now my cockpit, oh, it's come out. Flex. There we go, collapse. So it's in, now it's got to, there we go, got it collapsed. Pain in the ass, total pain in the ass. Now while I'm here, I'm just going to fold these sections down on their double hinges. Tap it all in, there's your cockpit done. Then around the back here, so <clears throat> similar story with this shoulder. Just going to collapse that in like that and then rotate the forearm because you've got a tab on the top of the cannon and a tab underneath the tail there so that all tabs in together nicely probably doing this in a really backwards way but i just found this was the easiest way for me to do it all right onto the legs for this side we need to move the shoulder pad clear out of the way and then bring this hinge up like that and then fold it, fold it flat against the side just like that there. Then we're gonna rotate this around, and then we need to rotate at the thigh joint, at the upper thigh swivel, sorry. Then we can just bring these feet around like that. Similar story on this side. Make it all flat, bring that around, twist the thigh swivel, and then just lay the leg flat. Now we've got tabs in the bottom of the feet, and right there in the side of the cannon. So we're just going to push them in together and that is nice and firm and we're nearly done so now just bring your wings down so you got a tab here it's going to slot into this section of the leg nice and firmly and then you've got a tab just in there that's going to go into the leg as well there we go nice and tight nice and secure and for the last bit with this section here Fold it out, so I'm gonna focus. Uh, we can just chuck the head back in, just like that. I'm told you can leave the hose attached, but um, I haven't found a way to yet, so I've just had to keep it to the side. 
I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty rigid, this hose. I don't really think it would cram in there all that well. But anyway, <clears throat> onto the jet mode. Now it looks pretty good, and on top looks great. It's it's a bit of a shame they didn't stick with the Saab um, design from the movie. He would have looked similar to Dirge in that respect. He looks more like a Pakistani or like a Middle Eastern fighter now. Um, but yeah, on top looks great. A lot of the black panels though, uh, I've got chips there, chips there. Like that's a that's the tab hole for robot mode. Missing a lot of paint there, and there's the paint <laughs> right on the tab. Um, a few more chips there. I got black spots on some of the wings. Um, yeah, a little bit messy on the wings. When it comes to the cockpit though, all fits in very nice. All the black paint is good. The silver there all tidies up really, really nicely. All of this, uh, it's a little bit gappy here. Uh, that's probably my fault, but <clears throat> yeah, uh, it does turn out good. Does the cockpit open? Yeah, uh, does it want to? There we go. Huge space. You could probably fit. Um, what could you fit in there? I've got a little headmaster here. He's probably too small, actually. Yeah, <laughs> way too small. Maybe one of the OS headmasters from Wei Jang will fit in there pretty good. I reckon that. Will, I reckon that would probably do all right. So yeah, not bad. A little bit of paint on the cockpit probably would have done all right. Um, it's nothing you can't add. Is that gonna? Gonna... There we go. So on the top looks great. I really dig it. Underneath though, um, what a mess. It's that whole cutlery situation again. You know, what, what are you going to do? The Takara or Hasbro designers, whoever designed this, they did a great job. Because it, it does look like he's just laying down, but you've got one arm sticking out here, one arm sticking out here. The legs have all sort of twisted around in that. Um, yeah, I think they've done the best with what they had. But yeah, um, it looks good. It is, it is huge and it is heavy as. Let's just... Um, so measurement wise from nose cone to the edge of the fins we're looking at 36 centimeters or to the engine we're looking at 33 centimeters and we've got a wingspan of 23 so he's a big boy very big boy um, yeah I like it so is it worth it and should you buy it? For me personally, the colors don't really appeal to me and I'm not that much of a Michael Bay fan anyway. I can see the value in it though and in bot mode, the amount of paint apps they've applied to this and the quality of the paint apps they've applied, it's just amazing. Those blues, the golds, the reds, they're all within the lines. They're all done really well. They're all thick enough. Everything is just so consistent. They've done a really consistent job. There's no good golds and bad golds. It's all the same level. It's all the same quality and I really appreciate that. Most of the joints were nice and strong and those that were a bit on the iffy side were strong enough. Everything was pretty good with this. The only problem that I did have articulation wise was the peg hole for the head. If it wasn't positioned absolutely right it was a little bit wobbly forward and back and also my movie head the ball socket on that was really really floppy. I could fix that by unscrewing it and um, adding a bit of floor polish or something just to thicken that up but yeah I'm not gonna bother. Plastic wise, there were like no sprue marks at all. This thing tidies up really, really well. Black Mama did a great job production wise. Unfortunately, when it comes to the jet mode, I did have a lot of paint chipping, especially on one wing. The rest of it was fine. The nose cone, the tail fins, everything else was fine. It was just, that's a high movement area. So it's, it's chipped quite a bit. But that is about all I can fault this guy for. But if you're a Bayverse fan, I think you're really gonna dig this. If you were already interested in this and you like how it looks and you're, you're, you're cool with everything, um, go grab it. There's no reason really not to if this is what you're after. Did have that one issue where I couldn't get quite enough clearance for that pin in one of the cockpit shoulder arm area. <laughs> that was incredibly frustrating. Not such a big deal now that I know exactly what it was, but um, just, yeah, that, that was annoying. Just something to keep in mind. And that's it. Now, if you like this video and you enjoy what I'm doing, please like and subscribe to my channel. Remember to check out my Facebook for daily news and updates on KO and third party stuff. Have an Instagram account, hashtag bots and bits, all one word. And as always, guys, thank you very much for your time and thanks a lot for watching.